because radiation, non-ionizing microwave radio frequency radiation is harmful to all living things, humans, children, pets, birds and bees, and we're here because we care about protecting our environment and our human population and particularly our children and our pollinators. So why are you marching? Because I'd like to see our local officials do something about 5G. I, I know that we've asked to keep 5G out of residential areas, but I'm not going to want to come downtown and shop if 5G is down here. I won't come down. Why I'm going to have to find somebody else to do it because I'm already having symptoms from wireless. And this is just going to exacerbate all my symptoms. We know that because we're hearing reports from all over the world where the 5G rollout has already happened. People's symptoms have become more exaggerated than already had them, and other people are having new ones. And one of the big problems is that doctors don't even know how to diagnose this because it's not federally recognized as a problem. We're trying to educate the public so that they understand what's going on and not just listen to the spin from the telecoms and that um, they join us in pressuring local government to do something more to protect us. We got to halt 5G now, especially in residential areas. The cancer rate is up, suicidality, mood disorders, and EMF sensitivity, electromagnetic sensitivity. And we need to start thinking about dismantling the uh, 1999 Telecommunication Act that allows these cell towers, small 5G cell antennas, to be put in because supposedly we're not allowed to oppose them on the basis of health. Obviously, they know they are harming us. We need to start even thinking bigger than we are because the Telecommunication Act is what is allowing all this to happen and is making it so the different board people, supervisors, afraid to break the law. I'm here because I want to live in Marin and stop 5G because I know San Francisco is probably, well, it's not totally dead. We have someone who in um, San Francisco at the Board of Appeals who thinks the Telecommunication Act is illegal and he realizes that it's harming us and he's asked the uh, San Francisco Department of Health to read a three-inch Bible of information from Joel Moskowitz lining, outlining all the harm it's doing to us. Do you feel personally harmed by it? Yes, I am EMF sensitive and I'm also in treatment for uh, breast cancer and I'm sure the breast cancer came from the two and a half years of having a smart meter on my house and not sleeping. Yeah, take care. Section 704 of the Telecommunications Act of 1996 expressly forbids people from using environmental or health concerns for um, warding off bad placement of cell towers. And that's an unjust law. That is saying that we can't yeah. protect ourselves against being accosted by unwanted microwave radiation. That is just as bad as the unjust laws that Germans obeyed in World War II when they said, oh, well, it's the law. We have to send those Jews and the gypsies and the everybody else to the um, gas chambers. That is not just. That's outrageous. And we have to remember that, and we have to remember we have an obligation to not obey unjust laws. The Telecommunication Act, in upholding it, we are condoning harm done to the public. The Constitution was written to protect the people. And there are laws in the past that were legal at the time that were prohibited, such as slavery and then women gaining the right to vote. And we need to outlaw the Telecommunication Act.
We're advocating that people become aware that this is a danger, that this is a hazard, that this is a threat to the well-being of our planet, and that people find avenues for action. People with children have to know about this. Our autism rates are skyrocketing. Our problems with mental health are skyrocketing. And it all seems to coincide with the rise of the cellular industry. Oh, I love it! I do child health and wellness. I work at preschools throughout Marin County, and I'm seeing more and more children that are having different chronic illnesses, and I want to help them. I'm here as a health professional concerned about all of us who are essentially being experimented on um, without our agreement and knowledge, my, myself included, um, about my fourth cell phone in, um, I began to get earaches, eye aches, headaches, and heart palpitations. When I went to Sprint to ask them if they had a lower emissions phone, they didn't know what I was talking about, but the, the employee said, well, actually, my, mo my mother gets migraines. She can't get near a cell phone. And I said, how many people come in here with this kind of complaint? And he said, too many. Subsequently, my work on a on, uh, laptop uh, made me completely intolerant of any uh, EMF emitting machines. Um, and I was bedridden for three months. Oh my um, word. At that point I recovered and didn't know what had happened until I began to use the laptop again and immediately got violently ill. Um, fortunately it only lasted 45 minutes. But I knew what was going on and I knew that not only did I have to try and protect myself, but that I had to act to as much as I could to help increase the knowledge about the dangers of this technology. Since you are an author, how do you manage without a laptop? I write my drafts by hand now, and I fax them to an assistant who inputs them for me, and then she sends me back the next draft. I correct that with handwriting, fax it back to her. She inputs the new text. Uh, and well, this is the way everyone used to write books, so... <laughs> carrying a cell phone, you're carrying a surveillance device. And 5G is all about surveillance. A part of my brain went offline when I was at a, a business conference. And it was a combination of the wireless commercial routers in the hotel that I was in, everyone's cell phone, and it was also the overhead high tension power lines and magnetic fields. So when that happened, it was devastating, and I didn't know what it was, and so I started to unwrap it, and then I finally studied with an engineer, one of the leading engineers in, in the area. And so what I've been doing since then is teaching people how to create a safe home so that at least in that environment, they have a place that they can be safe. Because the reality is we're bombarded with the chemicals in, the, in our environment, we're bombarded with wireless um, technologies, it's just the nature of our culture right now. And so it's learning how to work with those so that you're safe and so that your children are safe. And then ultimately working with it so that in the environment, the animals are safe because we can't survive without our environment. Our councils, our supervisors are not really addressing the real problem and that is that they should be keeping us from harm, not allowing industry to come in and harm us. And no studies required locally, no independent monitoring, these are huge problems. So it's our ultimate goal to get the sections of the 1996 Telecommunications Act repealed or overturned or revised in such a way 
that safety standards are based on science and that the public and our environment can be protected. And to that end, we're working at the local and the state level to get commissions and bodies of legislators, bodies of activists who can ultimately achieve that goal.